Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions About our obsession Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dark down for a while Hi, it's Jackie Cation And you are listening to The Dork Forest The website's JackieCation.com DorkForest.com thedorkforest.com if you like a determiner. Let's do the credits. Patrick Brady's going to fix this audio and video. Vilmos works on JackieCation.com. And Mike Rickberg uh, sang the song with his wife, Sarah. He composed it, and he will sing his version of the Mexican hat dance at the end of this show. Thank you so much for listening to The Dork Forest. Here's a scoop. I'm doing stand-up online. A lot of Zoom shows will eventually go back on the road. Sign up for my email list. It's easy to get off. It's harder to get on than it is to get off. And no harm, no foul, if ever bored. JackieCation.com. Sign up for the email list. You'll find out about my weekly Zoom shows and stand-up on the road eventually. You may donate to the show if you would like. I would like. Sure I would. There's PayPal, Jackie at JackieCation.com, and there is a PayPal button on both ZorkForest.com and JackieCation.com, and there's Venmo, if you like Venmo, Jackie-Cation, oddly enough. If you have listened to all of the shows, go to DorkForest.BandCamp.com, I think. The Dork Forest has a Bandcamp page. You can listen to a, but a lot of ones that are free from pre 2000 nine when I started pre-recording and uh then there's a live episodes that cost me a couple of bucks so I charge you a couple of bucks there's also some stand-up there's a story uh album that's very exciting there and um other than that I have a lot of merch in my garage feel free to order if you know anybody who doesn't have any cds or the dvd and uh you can follow me everywhere at Jackie Cation let's get into the show Hi, it's Jackie Cash from In My Living Room, and I'm talking to longtime ranger of the Dork Forest, uh, Justin Moret Mohareb. There you Mo- go. Mohareb. I, yes. I literally looked how it was spelled and then sounded <laughs> it out. So welcome to the program at the bitter guy on Twitter. And uh, I love your background on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you. I love this. It feels Canadian. It feels rustic. It is actually very Canadian. Uh, it's uh, it's Doc's Workshop from Fraggle Rock. <laughs> I don't know if you ever watched I that. It is. I don't get that. I wish to God that I got that. <laughs> I can't express to you how much I wish I got that. Uh, <laughs> that well, you just awesome. need to get a Fraggle Rock dork on here sometime. <clears throat> oh. And I think attainable goal. I don't yes. think that's I don't I don't think that's not gonna not gonna happen. I'm excited by the dorkdom that you've chosen. Because we're going to talk uh, the thing that I enjoy, yes. which is uh, Marvel Studios. Oh, wait. <laughs> Are you wearing a Marvel? No, I'm actually wearing a Star Wars Doctor Who mashup. So that's neither of those things. Well, technically, oh. both of those are Marvel. So there you go. Wait, did Disney buy Doctor Who? Not yet. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> that would involve them purchasing the BBC. And I think <laughs> there may be laws in place uh, to prevent that sort of thing. Uh, let's knock on wood. They don't need to have everything. It no, doesn't, they don't. it doesn't, they don't, they're, we spread the wealth a little bit here, people. They're so, far too powerful. They're super, super powerful. And there's only seems to be one decent Disney person. Uh, that one woman who's yes. at Disney, she seems to be sane as she sits on her Scrooge McDuck pile of money. <laughs> <laughs> actually works as yes. a reference literal uh-huh uh-huh and um so do you want to start with let's do this uh justin yes. mohareb let us discuss uh how long you now you're more marvel than dc i take it yes okay it's just that's you how like it DC. worked out yeah that's I mean, how, DC, yeah DC's great. DC had like Superman and the Batman and all those guys. And that was fun. And, but right. you know, Marvel just had you more. sucked you in, sucked you yeah. in. Me too. Me too. Cause I also enjoy DC, but, um, but Marvel quite, quite honestly just has more content <laughs> and, and they have yet to, they haven't really failed. There's been some things done better than other things, but there's a gajillion movies. Yeah. And a pile of TV shows. The the TV shows that were done prior are not as good, even though I'm a huge fan of Agents of Shield. Oh yes. Agents I of Shield that show. Fr- from the beginning. 
Um, where do you want to start? There is. Uh, we only well, have an hour. We've only I got could, an hour. I could yes. talk for an hour. <laughs> we could go for a bit, to be honest. It is. I mean, I started uh, in, you know, when I, I, it began when I was a child. Uh, my mother came home one day and brought me two comic books to read, one of which was uh one of which was part two of a justice league justice society crossover where they were investigating the murder of mr terrific and this is a character who had never appeared on super friends so i had no idea who he was i just said well if batman's upset i'm upset that's what we're <laughs> gonna go for this so you know i read that and it was fun and the other one was literally a issue of marvel fun and games which was uh crosswords and word searches and all sorts of silly stuff Oh. But, you know, so yeah, that was how I, me. yes, how I got started play, uh, reading comics. And then, you know, I would go to my local corner shop because this was small town Ontario in the late 70s. We right. did not have comic stores. No, no. it's but, uh, but they did have some comics at like the convenience store. Oh, yeah. They had the big I remember that. kids comics. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. We and you pull them down and, you know, if you have some place, they're lucky enough to pull them aside for you because they know they'll get your money. And... Yeah. And, you know, I made friends read comics and it was all big. And then one day they released the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, which I think if I had absorbed any other document as well as the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, I would be like a priest or a lawyer or a scientist <laughs> right now. Instead, I'm a guy who owns a lot of colorful T-shirts. So <laughs> that was a life choice and I made it. But uh, yes, uh, that's hilarious. I was just thinking about where I got comics when, when I was about, cause I was about 11 or 12 when I first, uh, uh, and it was the hobby shop. It was a, it was like a place that had like models and glue that they kept locked up. Cause I lived in small town, Wisconsin <laughs> in the, also in the seventies and uh, people wanted to sniff glue. Uh, uh, but the, uh, but there was, uh, there was comic books and then there was also really pulpy novels like i read a lot of uh african merc uh novels they were thrillers about mercenaries who fought in like rwanda oh yeah uh or with the mbele it was completely insane i was like what what is this is that like uh, eagle forest or something like that that sounds familiar i <laughs> didn't keep any of them but eagle force sounds like exactly what they would have called themselves that just written by some guy who probably owns like an ar-15 right now <laughs> and you're like come on man anyway um yeah i uh i have i'm, I'm i belong to a facebook group called men's adventure novels of the 1980s and these guys are very enthusiastic about these things <laughs> and these guys are also guys who are in their middle age in their middle ages and enjoyed reading adventure novels so you can see what the general sure director, and that's like can we I, don't always see eye to eye on things <laughs> well can i recommend a series that is out of print that they probably all have disposable incomes that they had in my high school, in my junior high, that I'm very sad that they, that when those books kind of fell apart, they just threw them out instead of fixing them because yeah. they're out of print. They were called boys books and they were written in the early 1900s. And, um, some of the series, there's one series, a very classic Civil War series, which I'm sure just whitewashes uh, <laughs> everything in the U.S. Civil War. But the guy's name is Joseph A. Altshuler. And he, Joseph A. Altshuler wrote about the French and Indian War. He wrote about uh, the Civil War. He wrote about World War I. And he wrote about... Um, uh, you know, essentially, he's like the poor man's uh, J. Fenimore Cooper. Right? Ah. There was a lot of, uh, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. Like, I wonder about <laughs> Joseph Altshuler sometimes. Like, I wonder, like, if he was one of these kind of, because he was from Kentucky and he wrote eight books about the Civil War. Four, there were two cousins fought on opposite sides. And, and I, and uh, so there's eight books and four <laughs> with, in each. And so I, I do wonder about uh, sort of his sociopolitical agenda which uh, I don't know, but then, uh, but I also don't think that your men's group uh, might care because uh, there was a lot of good action. They would definitely dig into that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I am eating into, into this. Yes. So you're <laughs> so, okay. So, Go for it. I, so yeah, I got, you know, 
I, I got into it. They released Ohatmu, which, uh, yeah, that's that's the abbreviation we use, Ohatmu. You okay. know, there's the standard Ohatmu and there's the deluxe Ohatmu. And, you know. What is Ohatmu? <clears throat> official Marvel handbook Universe. of the Marvel Universe. Jesus Christos. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. They, uh, <laughs> and, you know, it was like basically a page or two on every character. And you would okay. learn about people you'd never seen. It's like I, everything I know about the Eternals upcoming this fall from uh, Marvel Disney. Oh is from these books because i never it was like you know jack kirby was writing these things in the 70s i was wearing diapers you know okay. so. right right um interesting so, you know. yeah so, so i wonder if andy has ohatmo uh because he he is the one that i go to these movies with and i look at him sometime and it's like who's that <laughs> and uh because it's like it's it's being married to a long box who doesn't want to be that's a dick joke it uh is. who doesn't want to be uh who doesn't want that sort of information um it the first time like i remember like iron man came out and um i hadn't seen the hulk right the hulk came out officially before iron man uh in in sort of current the, mcu the, uh the incredible hulk came out a few months after iron man Oh, they came out almost simultaneously in my mind because it feels like Iron oh, Man came was. out way before, way after it, just because it was much more impression. I it made a bigger impression on me, I think. Well, so did it made a big impression on everybody <laughs> compared to the Incredible Hulk. Because <laughs> like that is a film that you know I don't think Disney likes to pretend it even exists anymore. And yet that, I've rewatched it and I like it. Oh, I, I enjoy it. I consider it one of the MCU canon now that I've used that word and pretty much established where this is going. Yep. <laughs> that's, yep. It's uh, <clears throat> yeah. So of the 23 movies, which are your favorites? Oh, well, that's like choosing your favorite kid now, isn't it? Well, the thing is, is you <laughs> could say, cause I do, I say, yeah. I love them all, but uh, so like for kids, yeah. like I would say Ant- Ant-Man's. Yeah. Uh, I would say my favorites are uh, Guardians 2. Guardians uh, 2. Nice. Cause just just because it's just a great. The yeah. living planet. <laughs> I did. I do love how like they actually just throw in that shot of the face on the planet for like a second <laughs> in the back half of the movie. That's okay. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Ego uh, Thor Ragnarok was also incredible. I loved how. As they got to phase three, they started giving the creators more freedom and more because, I, you know, I like seeing what what TD and, you know, Iron Man three. I am one of the few people who will stand up for that movie, but it is a pure Shane Black film. It's set as Christmas. It's about family. I love his stuff and I love that movie. Right. Him and that little kid have the greatest chemistry mm. that that is uh it's about PTSD. That's oh, yeah. what I mean. That's what I really like about like for for me, what I what I like about the MCU movies is that they and the TV shows, current TV shows, you know, I saw yeah. Daredevil. It was intense. <clears throat> uh, it made me want to write a night nurse <laughs> comic book. Um, but um, the. Yeah, but but the MCU universe it, it it deals with like real issues, you know. Yeah. Like if you if uh if we skip ahead to Wandavision, oh, it's Mickey entirely Park. about grief, grief, right? Oh yeah, she. Oh my God, that scene where she is like that flashback. I think I think it was, was it in the last episode where they show that she, you know, she drove to the. Uh, to the sword office and then she drove to the house vision bought her to grow yeah. old in that was yeah. a heartbreaker that was like oh uh. yeah yeah that was it was um out it was amazing which I is interesting because where did vision get the money <laughs> because clearly falcon can't get a loan <laughs> in falcon and the winter soldier i will point out that vision was still working for tony stark all through that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Falcon, Falcon was a was a fugitive from the law. You know, everyone on Team Cap, they were like hiding. You know, they were underground. Oh, right, right. right. So they, they lost their paychecks. Yeah. OK. All Vision has to do is like cut off one of his vibranium fingernails. Bing. You can put a down <laughs> pay. You just pay for the halves of that. Right. And it was a small town in New Jersey, so it wasn't exactly a Malibu. So, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, it was sort of Back to the Future, the first, <laughs> the first yeah. movie. Uh, that it, well, it wasn't the second movie because that was after, that was after Griff took over. <laughs> it was well that uh, I just uh, was. We're just gonna bounce all over the place. Uh, <laughs> it's pop culture, you guys, and but. Yeah, the second movie, my brother Phil just told me that he 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 loves the Back to the Future series. And he said the Back to the Future second movie is just an ad for the third movie. It's just an hour and a half mm. ad for the third movie. <laughs> you like so, cowboys? Because we're going for cowboys next. Yeah. And uh, mm. OK, so Guardians so, 2. Yes. Just, you know, it was great. Ragnarok, Ragnarok was amazing. Uh, what you love about Ragnarok? Because mm. it was it was mm. hella... And it was the buddy movie, right? And Loki? It was a buddy movie. It was a family movie. It was about dealing with the consequences of your family's history. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you got lots of, you had a little bit of uh, of Sir Hopkins, but, uh, you know, he, he what, definitely made was an impact. It? Sir Anthony Hopkins. Sorry. Uh, was Odin. it was doing what? Oh, was doing Odin. Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. he shows up and he's like, I love you boys both. Oh, I'm going to die now. <laughs> but you guys gotta live your own lives yeah. and uh yeah that's um yeah you, you can't hang out with all your siblings all the time and uh <laughs> but it does have yeah it does have <clears throat> that sort of history to it okay yeah because I, I love them all but those two are not my two of my favorites so this is interesting yeah. to me everyone takes something different away from uh yeah something that's one of the great things about any type of popular culture it's like and you yeah. can say, yeah, this is uh, this is my thing. Right. And so because because if you think about it, Guardians is also about family as well. Oh, I mean, though, the first yeah. one was about creating a family and the second one was literally about finding the history of your family. And um, <laughs> so that is fascinating. And, um, so and you when, know, as yeah. as someone who had, you know, maybe not the best relationship with your dad growing up, you know, it's like seeing that it's like, Hey, yeah, we're going to hang out play ball. Oh, by the way, you know? Right. Yeah. You're never alone. You're absolutely <laughs> never alone. So what was the, the, it's always curious to me <clears throat> that, um, <clears throat> let's see. Cause, cause when you watch the movies, it's all canon. It's all the long boxes. They go so far into the, into the boxes that sometimes you know, what I love about comic books is that they get to create their own story within it. They get to yeah. create, you know, like Bendis will just create the century. And you're like, that guy doesn't exist. What's happening? What did you, and you retconned him into somebody's life? What happened? No. You, always and, need a, um, you always need your own Superman. <laughs> right. But there wasn't there. I mean, I think there was a Superman, wasn't there? Um, well, I mean, who, who was, there were several, they had the squadron Supremes, uh, big dude i can't remember and i've forgotten his name oh right that's now. right hyperion yeah. hyperion that's right hyperion yeah. was more the superman and <clears throat> he could have just written hyperion stories but he wanted to create the century and the century is such a mess and the only reason i know about the century <laughs> is because he's he's in my video game he's in my marvel puzzle quest and every time i get a cover of him which is a level up i'm like who cares <laughs> And because he always he he not only has an amazing power, he's always hitting himself like he whenever he uses his power, he always destroys himself as well. OK, that's a bit self-destructive. Well, it feels on the nose, too, because yeah. that's the character. Right. So because um, there's so many different places that that these are now, you know, I mean, there's the there's the series. Um. I don't even know where to lead you. Just start talking. Let's Plug and play. Play. All right. So I want to take you back to the early aughts. It was a kinder, gentler time. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I know it may not have been the best. Uh, stuff kind of went sideways uh, one November night in 2000, but we're not going to go there. Uh, but so they had released uh, the ultimate universe. So they did the ultimate Spider-Man that Bendis was writing where he, retold some of the stories from the classic Lee Ditko years. Right. And then they released a series called the ultimates, which is basically the Avengers for this setting. Okay. And in that book, uh, they use Sam Jackson as the face of Nick Fury. And everyone was like, well, that's a very interesting choice. I wonder how they did that. 
And one person, some nerd on the internet, which is unfortunately 90% of the sources I have for anything I hear, which means I don't think we should trust any of it. So consider this a story told around a fireplace. Okay. So a nerd on the internet said that, well, yeah, Sam Jackson agreed to be Nick Fury in the Ultimates if he could play him in a movie at some time. And I'm like, that's a fascinating suggestion, nerd on the internet. I'm going to accept that as gospel. I don't know if it was actually gospel. <laughs> okay, but that's what you heard when the Ultimates came out with that. Um... Yeah, so they did okay. that story. And then, you know, the Ultimates was very much its own book. I don't know if you got to read it or not, but I don't think I did was because was that in the w before they merged the two universes together? Oh, well, before. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did that after. after I never, yeah, I never read that. That the, I think the only w when they started merging it, it was the Spider-Verse. That was the only one that was my introduction to the Ultimates. Yeah. You I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't think you missed a whole hell of a lot, to be honest. They, there was too much. So I, I can't remember. I think it was Miller or Ennis or one of those guys who hates comic books and the people who read them who wrote it. Because <laughs> at one point they have Captain America fighting a scroll and the scroll says, Are you going to surrender now? And he says, Do you think the letter on my head stands for France? And I'm like, Wow, I have no idea what you're doing with that dude, but that's wow. That see, that's and it. the weird thing is, and I have said this before, <laughs> before I read, I think it was Brubaker's um, Captain America. Yeah. I always thought that Captain America was a tool. Oh, yeah. I was like, I don't want any part of. Why is he in this weird Amer like flag outfit, and is he a piece of work? He's and he's quit being Captain America several times because of like right. you know, like in the '70s, he's like, I don't dig this Nixon thing. I'm going to be Nomad, the man without a country. That's right. Had, a, had the new outfit with his chest exposed, so you can tell Steve Rogers either shaves or the super right? serum makes you drop. I don't know. I'm not going to judge. Right, right. He might and not be hairy. He might be non-hairy. That's how blonde guys roll sometimes. I, and then in the 80s, uh, the government said, hey, Cap, we want you to work more closely with us. And he's like, no, I quit. And he became the captain. That's and, right. And uh, John Walker took over as Captain America. And that led on to the wonderful events of Falcon and Winter Soldier. And U.S. agent. And U.S. Uh, agent, yeah. Yes. And uh, and Kurt Russell's son. Yes. So, um, yeah. A delightful performer who I very much enjoyed in his little A&E show about uh, a surfer and magical realism. Oh, right, right. What was the name of that one? Lodge 49. Okay. And All right. If you ever get the chance, uh, know that it ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> so, okay. Fair yes. enough. But yeah, so, you know, uh, they got Sam Jackson and uh, I most recently read that they did that without his permission. And he said, this is very uncool. What are you doing? And they're like, oh, we realize now that this is wrong. We're sorry. And he said, I'm a comic fan. It's okay. Pay me money. And we'll talk about other stuff in the future. Yeah. So, you know, it could go either way, but I'm just glad Sam Jackson apparently has, I don't know how many contract films he's contracted for, but he does whatever he wants. Right. They made peace with it. And he, and he is an amazing Nick Fury. So he does, he does a great job. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to the first Iron Man movie. Right. You know, 2000... 2008 or nine. I can't okay. remember. Sure. I do. I do remember it was before I got an iPhone and this is significant because it indicates that I am not as big an asshole as this anecdote I'm about to tell makes me sound. <laughs> so we see Iron Man and I think we go on the Tuesday after it's come out because like, let's go see it. Sure. Uh, we'll get tickets for Tuesday. So my wife and our friend Lori and me, we go see it and everyone isn't saying, oh, you go see an Iron Man yet? No, not yet. Well, make sure you stay till after the credits. And I'm like, well, okay, I'm sure there'll be something very interesting after the credits. And, you know, we're watching it, very much enjoying ourselves. He's flying pew, pew, pew. You know, uh, the bad guys speak Arabic, which, hey, not, uh, it's the aunts. This thing is unfortunately common. And uh, a friend of mine who's a linguist actually pointed out that the way they speak Arabic is very interesting because uh, I can't remember the name of the big furry face guy, but when he uh, introduced himself to Tony Stark, he's being very polite and formal. And when he's talking to the other guys, he speaks a much more street uh, version. And then they use another more other formal verse version when they're delivering the uh, message to Stain. So that's all very, you know, at that's, least they showed some interest in. In inaccuracy. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. Um, yeah. Which, which they, 
which is is more respectful than any number of the bad guys are just going to be Russian or the bad guys are just going to be Arabic or Middle Eastern, some vague Middle Eastern mm. thing. Yeah. I, or lies. some vague Asian thing oh, where yeah. you're like, that guy's Korean. He's yeah. supposed to be Chinese. What's happened? <laughs> and so, all right. No, yeah, it's uh, well, Orientalism, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's uh, out of their minds. So at least they they tried. Yeah, they, uh, they made some effort, you know. It's and once again, uh, evil Arabs, but yeah. But you get into that film, and I don't know the exact time code, but you get Clark Gregg walk in, and he's Agent Coulson from right. Supreme Headquarters International Espionage, whatever the Shield logo they're using. And I, and literally, my jaw dropped when he said that because like. This guy is from S.H.I.E.L.D. He is mm -hmm. from S.H.I.E.L.D. And they just said that out loud. Yeah, they did. And I took my phone out of my pocket and I texted Cindy and my wife, Cindy, and our friend Lori. And I said, the post credit with your scene. With Nokia? With my Nokia. Yeah, with my okay. black Nokia, which you can type on in the dark because, you know, A, B, C. <laughs> Right. Well, hopefully you had predictive. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, you, and I said uh, the post credit scene will be Sam Jackson as Nick Fury. And this was me speculating based on nothing except that guy on the Internet saying Sam Jackson wanted to play Nick Fury and Clark Gregg playing Phil Coulson over in here. So, you know, imagine you my surprise. It. That turned out to be right. I called it. I was 100% yep. correct. Why can't I do that on lottery numbers? You know? <laughs> well, except for that, that. Right. I mean, I literally will sit through some of these movies and Andy will go. He'll just lean over and, and say, OK, that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> remember to ask me about that. And so they're all Easter eggs. They're all, you know, it's like yep. in in us in Ragnarok. I think there was a, a, a bust of Beta Ray Bill. Yeah. And uh in uh, on the on the world that Jeff Goldblum ruled, yes, um, cigar, yeah. So and uh, yeah. So, okay, you know, so so you so called I knew, it. I texted that uh, very excited, and then you know he shows up at the end, and the room goes wild. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, two months later, the Hulk comes out, and they have at the you know the post credit scene where Tony Stark talks to uh, the General, General Ross, mm -hmm. Thunderbolt Ross. And tells him, you know, it's like he's putting together a team. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, oh, my God, they're actually doing this. And they start rolling the stuff out. And they were very optimistic <laughs> at that initial point. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to do a Thor movie and a Captain America movie. And then we're going to do an Avengers movie and blah, 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 blah. And at some point they sat down and realized that this would involve actually murdering Robert Downey Jr. So they said, we're going to pace these out a little bit better. Stretch out the timeline a little bit. Right. And, you know, then they had, you know, the big Comic Con uh, panel. Did you go to did you go to Comic Con oh, I in, in those to, years? No, yeah, I haven't no. been to Comic Con since like 99. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, yeah, I went, I think in, I think I went in 2004. And that was uh, the first time. And then the last time would have been 2006 or 2008 because uh, too many people, it's, even pre-pandemic, oh. I can't, uh, I, I don't like, uh, I don't like to be jostled. Yeah, I'm anti jostling. It's, so it went Iron Man and then first Avenger. Uh, first Avenger was no, they had Thor in between. Right. It was Thor, Man. but right. Iron Man, Thor, and then first Avenger. Right. Yeah. So then they have half, they have essentially most of the team right there. Oh, yeah. except for that Black Widow and Hawkeye didn't yeah. never got their own movies. They never got their own. Black Widow got introduced in Iron Man 2, mm -hmm. which I am midway through rewatching because Nowadays, I cannot just watch a whole damn movie. I have to like watch 10 minutes at a time, then go off and do something else. We were during the uh, during the heart of the pandemic, we were doing a rewatch and we stopped at homecoming. That's how far we got. We got that's to um, pretty far. that's pretty, di pretty deep. Uh, so we haven't watched homecoming yet, but uh, homecoming is one of my favorites just because yeah. they finally took the vulture, which is a lame a lame sea supervillain in the books uh, and made him epic. Michael Keaton. Oh, he there was a reason a there was a, there was, it made all, it made all kinds of sense. It was just awesome. He was so. his girlfriend's dad. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, so, and, and it made sense from, you know, at the end of and this is, this episode of course is full of entire spoilers, but these movies are oh, 10 yeah. years old, if not 20. So, um, but the, when, when he knows who Spider-Man is, when he goes to jail, 
but because Spider-Man saved his life, he doesn't yeah. tell the bad guys who he is because he's, he's very much, I guess, tit for tat kind of guy. He's a, he's a quid pro quo kind of, of super villain. Yeah. And, um, I did and, like how that was, I think that was the scorpion the guy he, uh, was talking that he to. He was talking to, I think it was, I think it was, it wasn't the lizard, was it? <clears throat> No. It was the scorpion. Okay. They they had the lizard in the uh the amazing Spider-Man films and that didn't didn't, that didn't take. Pa- that didn't pan out. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Stuff got weird there. The casting is amazing. Oh yeah. The the woman the woman who's in charge of casting uh for some reason is a genius uh at her job. She is really really I mean the fact that uh Chris Evans played the Human Torch in the unlamented fantastic four movies which are and the thing is 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 i will i'm predisposed to like this stuff right as i'm sure you are um the fantastic four was terrible (laughs) it wasn't great none of them have been great so far there was trouble there was all kinds of trouble where i was like no what are you doing (laughs) and but i have read some great invisible woman i think it was either slot or fraction oh yeah uh though it might have been uh clark uh uh clarkson no kelly clarkson is a musician um so <laughs> well, you know, anyone can write comics these days uh i want to write comics yeah, yeah. but yeah but what uh who 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 wrote the invisible kelly woman Sud- kelly sue DeConnick? i don't think it was she kelly wrote, sue DeConnick. she wrote, she wrote captain, captain marvel. marvel yeah yeah but um was it a, was it a solo sue richard sue uh storm book or was it yeah a, yeah okay. and so she also but uh there's there's two Kellys who are writing comic books, and um, and I I have uh, blessedly gotten to meet. Um, there's Kelly Sue DeConnick, and there is probably well, not Joe Kelly. <laughs> it is a Joe Kelly. It's um, Kel- Kelly Thompson. It's I might I th- I think it's Kelly Thompson. Yeah, because she's also writing. She's writing a bunch of stuff right now, and it's pretty great. And uh, but there's a great Sue Storm as a spy. Oh, that's perfect. Yes, and <laughs> um, and that's a great arc that is, I think, ongoing right now. Oh. And we're and we're reading that, and that's super fun. But the casting, like for Chris Evans as Captain America, was so great. And he and the interviews with him, how it, it that that role actually changed him as a person. Yeah, was kind of cool. Have you he read is. any of that? I've I follow him on Twitter, where he just seems to be just a great guy all the time, and I'm <laughs> sure that must be exhausting because right even I <laughs> even I get frustrated, and I don't have to deal with fans who have no comprehension of the barrier between character and performer, or right. you know. And his that commitment, yeah. right. And his commitment to that character, you know, yeah. and being that guy, which is kind of awesome that, um, which is interesting because the guy who the other Chris who plays, um, star Lord, he kind of went off the deep end a little bit and kind of, uh, went up his own ass a little bit. So yeah, people, people always call him the worst Chris and I'm like, well, you know, well, he, I think what happened was he, cause it's, it's true though. Cause fame can go to your head, you know, like I have met people. I am in a business where I yes. meet occasionally people who were less successful and then become more successful. And some people handle it better than other people. And, uh, and so I if all of a sudden, that. yeah. And if you're Chris Pratt and you, play the guy in the office and you're hugely successful and you're kind of a schlub on that show. And then you become a superhero and hot women start throwing themselves at you. You might take advantage of that and be psyched about it. And then your wife might go, that's disappointing. (laughs) And uh, we're going to have to part ways, but that doesn't mean you should also go off the deep end and become a super entitled other kind of guy because I was under the impression he was all churchy now. Yeah, uh, I think he, well, but I think he found the church of making money, you know, like the Joel Olstein kind of church, you know, that's not good where you're just like, you know what Jesus wanted? He wanted, uh, he wanted back end. He wanted options. (laughs) Uh, that was not Jesus's main point. So you want to poke in here and just, uh, and see that, uh, there's Andy Ashcraft. Hey Andy. 
We're talking his favorite uh, MCU movies are the second uh, Guardians and Ragnarok because they're both very family. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Go to the grocery store. This has been uh, a quick cameo by Andy Ashcraft. Mind him to make uh, sure he gets some eggs. Don't forget some. Don't forget some eggs. Jo- Justin would like eggs. No, you might as well get <laughs> eggs. We could we could use a dozen eggs. All right. Um, in yes. other news, in other news. Uh, he has his own podcast called Ethics and Video Games, uh, yes. which everyone should listen to. This has been a tiny ad for Andy Ashcraft, I've Justin. Heard- We'll give you an extra 10 minutes. Okay, go ahead. That's great. (laughs) Uh, I I just wanted to join in the plugging and say I'm enjoying Andy's uh, podcast with, is it Shlomo? His his name is Shlomo Cher. He's going to do the, I think it's the next episode, his dorkdom, Sandcastles. Well, there you go. Which is a weird and awesome uh, thing. I I enjoy the, uh, minorly tangentially, they do a big sandcastle exhibit at the, uh, at the Canadian National Exhibition every year, and a really? frequent subject of uh, sculpture is occasionally people do like pop culture ones. I've seen Star Wars ones. Can't remember if I saw any Marvel ones, but Ooh. let's assume they did. Probably, it's uh, yes. everyone wants to build. Uh, do you know that we went to Iceland? We went to Reykjavik, Iceland, and there's a church there that looks like um, the Thor's castle. Oh, there you it, go. It looks like the uh, it, in in Asgard. It looks like their their palace. A bit Kirby inspired. A bit, very much so. Very cool. Yes, uh, and if we are going to mention Kirby, I just want to say that I'm glad that Disney settled with his family uh, to make sure they got some pay. But I wish kind of it had gone to the Supreme Court so they could have said, "Oh no, these contracts are terrible. You need to treat your creators better." That yeah. would have been good. I would have liked to see that. Because uh, then everybody would have got money. Every, yeah, everyone would have. Right. Like, you know, then then the guy who created Ghost Rider would be selling, you know, illegal sketches at cons and oh, stuff. Oh God, he needs cash. Yeah, it's like everyone. You like all these people who were working for you know Marvel and DC in the seventies and eighties and nineties. These are guys who were, let's just say, they could use retirement. And you very rarely hear about a comics artist retiring. Right. They just keep going mm-hmm. until they fall over. And yeah. um. I will say, now I wish to, this is true, there is injustice. In other news, Agents (laughs) of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Ghost Rider arc. Yes, that was very, that was very cool. The first pandering to those people who did not enjoy <laughs> the uh, the first four seasons of Go- of, uh, of of Agents of Shield. They were incorrect, by the way. They were I was, totally. I I loved Agents of Shield from the beginning just because I liked the idea of the Office meets Shield with no yes. powered characters at all. That was kind of cool. They were well. I mean, you know, they didn't have superpowers, but they were super spies. You know, right. they had they had all the fancy gadgets, and you had Ward, who was a fairly you know they they introduced him great because like nobody liked him at the beginning, and then it was like, oh, I guess he's like, oh wait, he's actually evil. He he's super. He's the super, super villain. He's the yeah, bad man. He's a bad <laughs> person who never. And yeah. you, you're just like, he has that redemption mm. of. You know, Hitler liked Ava Braun. That's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough, buddy. I know you like dogs. Still not enough. <laughs> and uh, but uh, the uh, yeah, that's uh, completely. It was yeah, it was all gadgets in that first season, and then they're like, oh, people don't like it. So then we have to make somebody Inhumans. Yeah. And they brought in the Inhumans, and you're psyched. And then so it's weird that they they go in humans. But and they then, don't go the Inhumans. It's like, yeah, these are other Inhumans. They live over here. But, you know, they get a card from Black Bolt every Christmas. <laughs> uh, but it's obviously mass produced. You know, it's like. Longtime friend uh, and fan of the show, Steve Mandel, um, has po- pointed out what I never even thought about, which was, why doesn't Black Bolt have a whiteboard? <laughs> why does he have to thought? To his to Medusa, and then she's got to repeat everything he says. Well, I mean, for a while he did some sort of sign language. Sign language, and then okay. she would, uh, you know, she would translate. And I assume that every member of like the royal family speaks, you know, Atalan sign language. 
I hope yeah. so because yeah. she could be just be editing whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know what he really – he really wanted to order the chicken. And he's just <laughs> sitting there going, no, no, I actually did I've, – I've gone vegan. What's happening? All right, I'm having the chicken. <laughs> Then he says tofu and the entire world is destroyed. Oh my right. God. Tofu. Ah. <laughs> Good yeah, that is, that's a heck of a, um, how does he learn the level of when he whispers what level it does, you know? Sure. That was outlined in some, some, something in, some, in the seventies. Like I, I also want Namor. I want Namor with the power of the sun to be in the MCU at hmm. some point. And I want him to bring Killmonger back to life. That would be neat. I Cause they tossed that. him into yeah. the ocean. They tossed yes. him into the ocean. Namor's got to find him, reanimate <laughs> him, bring him back. <laughs> well, that depends, you know, if they embalmed him first or not. I don't. <laughs> oh, I don't think they did. Cause yeah. he was like, no, just throw me into the ocean. And, uh, I don't, you know, I would, I would like, I wish we could have seen more of Killmonger, but he had a very good arc and, yeah. uh, you know, in the end he, uh, you know, he had, he had good points, but he may oh. have not been going about them in what could be the best ways. And I honestly, I really enjoyed Black Panther. Mm -hmm. I just don't feel comfortable discussing it because it's like not my story to tell. <laughs> right. Well, and the, the crazy thing is, is when, when you look at the, the story of, of Black Panther and, because Killmonger is right, you know. Killmonger, there, oh, yeah. there's, there's, there's definitely. Uh, I have had. I think I, I think it was Joyel Johnson who just did an episode. Uh, she talked about Black Panther. I did a, a mini episode with her. Spoiler. Go back uh, in time and look for that, Rangers. Um, and she was talking about how everyone was on board with Killmonger until he killed um, the guy. His uh, uh, Forrest uh, Whitaker? Yeah. Was that Forrest Whitaker? I think it was, the actor. They're like, when he killed Forrest Whitaker, we were all like, oh, I see. He's actually evil. Step and his, Well, I don't know. When he shot his girlfriend, I was like, oh, yeah, mm, that was yeah, yeah. unnecessary, Eric. That was unnecessary. Hmm. It was the same with the Flag Smashers in uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. You're like, yeah. one world, one people. I'm on board. I'm on board. Yeah, treat and people then, nice. Sure. Get people medication. Why not? Blow up a bunch of people. Wait. <laughs> right, right. Get housing for people. The, the the reanimation after the after the snap, right after everyone's dusted, yeah. the reanimation, the re undusting, was so fascinating in Wandavision. Oh my God! When they showed that, I was like, "What is? What is this? What is that? Oh, this is what is happening." Mm -hmm. and, I was, and the best part, okay, if I can, one of my things I love about Wandavision is that you have to, if you look at things from Wanda's perspective. One day, she and Vision are hanging out in Scotland doing their little runaway. I don't know how often they do it, but apparently occasionally they both leave their team cap and team Iron Man and go hang out somewhere, spend a nice romantic weekend. That's great. Uh, you know, they're doing that. And he's like, let's not do this anymore. Let's just let's go together and make ourselves legitimate, as legitimate as we can be. Maybe he's already bought the house at that time. Yeah. And then, you know, she, he probably was going to give her that. And then. Some aliens attack. He gets stabbed. They fly to Wakanda. He, they try and take the soldier out. Doesn't work. She has to murder him to try and keep Thanos from destroying the universe. And then he brings him back and kills him anyway. This is the day before for her. Right. And then she gets snapped away. Then yeah. she gets snapped back and walks through a portal where she smacks Thanos very enthusiastically. Everyone knows, yeah, she was the one person on the field who was showing him what time it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, like, and like literally a week or two later is when WandaVision happens. This is the crap she has been through in one day for her. Right. Her brothers yeah. died in the last year. Yeah. Her, her, her fella's gone. Yes. There's no, yeah, everybody's dead. You know, no, her yeah. family's gone. It's like her, you know, her brother who she grew up with, you know, mm -hmm. and it is probably the one person who she could talk about anything with. And now the vision who she loves. And, right. You know, you know, she had to kill him. That was right. from her perspective. Kill the vision. He gets brought back. How traumatic is that right, right. there? So she's gone mad. She's she literally had, she's gone off the deep end. And so she's just <laughs> recreating this reality. Yeah. And what about when 
Quicksilver from the X-Men shows up. That was great. That was a piece of cunning uh, production on the part of the creators because that was you know, a bait for the fans. It's like, oh, look, it's this guy. And, you know, it's like everyone's like, is that the guy who played Quicksilver in the X-Men? And it's like, yes, well, you know, in your brain it is. In this world, it's Ralph Boner from next door. Right, right. You know? <laughs> and then they played that and it's like, oh, there is nothing not evil about you and i love that right there's so many layers to that and in the blind whispering there's this thing uh uh, did you what happened was is when when there's closed captioning right for the the hearing impaired and then there is blind whispering for people who are visually impaired which is called audio description the descriptive audio yeah. yeah so in the audio description they say the actor who played quicksilver in the X-Men movies. Yes. So that you didn't lose it. So you didn't, so you're like, oh, so you yeah. got it. So you could get it even if you were visually impaired, which I love the explaining of the Easter eggs in the audio description. That's all yeah. I want. I just want that. <laughs> I want that forever. And I and I want a series where we just get to see the re the undusting of I, of, a, of billions of people just just show like one or two stories about people popping back in because like one in, shots uh, in, in far from home like yeah. you know it was like boom we're all back yay mm-hmm. you know and like you know end game they didn't even show it it's like yeah. you know hulk snapped his fingers and it's like is this are they back it's like i think so passes out and then you know sam the first thing you know that it worked is when sam whispers in caps here which blew my mind that was a great night i saw that film twice and yeah, both times that just, that was just so sweet. Just that he came back first. Mm. But yes. Uh, Describe that scene. Oh so yeah. That so that people yeah. have not seen it. If you, oh, if you haven't seen it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> There's the thing, those, those two Welcome adventure movies <laughs> were so, they were, they were so busy for me. They were yeah. so intense. I could have, it could have been four movies for me. That's what I like about the the series. Yeah. Th- you know, it really decompress stuff. I don't love that in comics, but I can enjoy that in a, in a movie versus. Yeah. In, uh, in Endgame, you know, the Avengers do the time heist to get to reassemble the uh, Infinity Stones after Thanos destroys them. He mm-hmm. uses the stones to destroy the stones. Smart, but a dick move. Uh, so... Uh, <laughs> So they they reassemble them, and you know the only person who can use them without dying is the Hulk. So you know he snaps his fingers to bring everyone back, and then Thanos attacks because he's the king of timing, blows the crap out of the Avengers headquarters. Uh, they're all scattered to the winds in this very small location. So you know a bunch of them are buried alive. Uh, Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor fight Thanos and lose. Quite specifically, he beats mm-hmm. the crap out of everyone. Although mm-hmm. you do get that one glory moment of Cap lifting Mjolnir and smacking a crap out of Thanos with that. That got a cheer. That got exactly. a pop from the crowd. And I have to say that when I saw that, that was not I. You will notice in all the Avengers movies, Falcon Sam Wilson never is given the option to to try to lift it. And I posit that he could have. Oh, he oh, because he, he nobody. <laughs> Nobody is more on the is more true to his character throughout the entire series than Sam Wilson. And even though he only has, you know, six or eight scenes over three movies, he's amazing. I, I you know, I that's definitely true. No one is more noble and worthy, but I don't know if the hammer's racist or not. You gotta... the, oh, because of I don't think so because no, they, they mix yeah. it up because of Heimdall and they ma- there was racist people who lost their shit that Idris Elba played Heimdall oh and you're God. like oh I'm so sorry did something happen in a fictional it's a stalker <laughs> mate with a brain on it you idiot there I'm was so- a Facebook group called Boycott Thor uh, because they did not like that Elba was playing Heimdall. And every week I would go into that group and say, oh, hey, guys, great job. Thor made this much at the box office this week. Yeah. And that was that was my uh, I tried to go back and it's just like a pure white supremacist thing now. So I'm like, hey. oh, yeah, you guys could fuck yourselves. Hey, yeah. uh, please do murder suicide, but in the <laughs> other order. So um, the um, bad. yeah, it's so, such bad people. It's every 
rock in this country mm. is turned over. Anyway, so but yes, uh, I I, th- I think you're definitely right. I think Sam Wilson could get a chance with that could. hammer. It would have been great. It would have been so great if he would have been the one too. But I get why they did Captain America because he's Captain yeah. America. Captain and then. America. Yeah, and he's in my Marvel Puzzle Quest. That's one of the characters you can play is Captain America with the hammer. Oh, beautiful. Oh yeah, super God. fun. I super would. Fun. Oh, do they have an action figure of Cap holding the hammer? They probably do. And if they don't, someone has modded that. Someone has <laughs> modified something to make someone, it so. Someone has just taken a, a hammer and put it in his hand and said, yay. Ah, oh, finally. There, there was yes. a, did you ever read the JLA Avengers crossover? Uh, no, but I heard about it. What I forget what that is. Who wrote that? Uh, it was uh, Buziak and Perez. Oh, so Kurt Buziak! Much- everything he writes, I want to read. Oh yeah, I and, per- and Perez, I love. Uh, but I, I can't, I can't name everything Perez has done. But I can, I'm on board. Well, he, name something, and he's probably done it because that guy okay. has had a huge career. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so they did a crossover. They there was a plan to do it in the '80s, and it blew up because the people in charge of Marvel and DC were schmucks. So. The people at Marvel and DC said, let's make a lot of money and produce a book together. And they did. And it was great. But like, I think the third or fourth issue is a picture of Superman holding Captain America's shield in one hand and Mjolnir in the other. Oh, and that is. Yeah, because that think. makes sense. Awesome. Yes. Because that is Superman as well. And um, though, I don't know. Did you ever read the Mark Wade irredeemable and, and incorruptible? I did not. It, uh, they, a little it is. Excessive. It's super dark. Yeah. Uh, quite honestly, Irredeemable was not my favorite. Uncorruptible. Wait, Uncorruptible was the Superman story. Irredeemable was the supervillain story set in the in the superhero story. Okay. So, and the way it ends is epic. It is beautiful. Because I also read, is it Astro City? Yes. Is that the Busey? Yeah. All of, we've, I've read almost all of those. Oh, yeah. And those are, is. those are oh, always amazing. So good. Yes. I often I often wish that someone instead of just adapting the boys again would just do Astro City. Uh, but yes. Uh, yes. Just, uh, give us something or top to, ten. Did you ever read top ten? I didn't. I the, Moore was producing so much at that time I couldn't yeah. keep up with all of them. It's impossible. Top, impo- top ten yeah. looked neat. It is neat. And my favorite, do you remember Hill Street Blues, the, the television show? Oh, yeah. Uh, th- it was, it sort of felt like that. That was one of the first series I ever read in 2003 when Andy started handing me stacks of comics. <laughs> and he was like, just try this. Just try, what about this guy? What about that guy? And uh, so top 10, the the sergeant, the one who said, be careful out there in Hill Street Blues. Oh, yeah. In top 10, essentially, that's what I, that's what I thought that was. <laughs> it was Hill Street Blues. And the sergeant was a to- Doberman pitcher. Oh, there you go. And I was uh, happy as a clam that it was a Doberman pitcher. There, okay. Uh, yes. We, we only have, we're, we're almost at an hour, which is okay. insane. I... We're not really, but I do want to <laughs> talk about. Um, okay. I want to ask you one question okay, before please. we do anything else. All right. So you have seen all of them. You have seen Spider-Man Homecoming. I have. All right. Now you recall at the end, we see that Nick Fury is actually Talos undercover for Nick Fury. Oh, Right. Here's a question I want to ask you. How many times when we've seen Nick Fury, has it actually been Nick Fury? And when has it been Talos? Oh. Follow-up question. Is there a real Maria Hill or is it always Soren? Because we know there's a real Nick Fury. Because, you know, yeah. he's the guy who met Talos in Captain Marvel. Let's yeah. assume like, like, you know, in Iron Man and, the, and maybe all the phase one stuff. That's Nick Fury, Nick Fury. But when did Nick Fury decide he had to go off into space and start doing whatever he's doing in space with the scrolls? Like, you know, what was that? Uh, was that after Avengers Alt Age of Ultron? Was that, you know, or was it, you know, was was the Nick Fury who goes who okay my, in the end? hairs <laughs> on my arm just went up. You have literally blown my mind. When what do you think? Uh, I I think it was after Age of Ultron. I think if it was not always, then we had uh, significant periods where Talos was covering for him, which still also allows us for having a real Maria Hill. Although, yeah, there has to be a real Maria Hill. I want there to be a real Maria Hill. I love Maria Hill. Colby Smulders is amazing as that character. I honestly wish uh, that we could see more of her in the role because she's, you know, 
she's a very uh i i first was introduced to, the, to her as a performer on uh, how i met your mother okay and, and then she gets these you know and she was you know she was playing a very funny but also very rough person because she was canadian and uh, so <laughs> you, so then she gets cast as uh, maria hill and i'm like oh this is cool and you know you know avengers she's mostly filling out nick fury's forms and occasionally shooting at people sure but like you know civil i mean captain america winter soldier she is like full on there she's like beating guys up and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. much of the extendable batons whacking people all the good mm-hmm. stuff and uh yes and I wish she, I don't, I don't not like Sharon Carter and Falcon Winter Soldier, but I kind of wish Maria Hill was also in there. And I do love that Julia Louise Dreyfus comes in. Um, yes, that is very, that I've, is aw- awesome. I'm led to believe that her character is actually supposed to get introduced in Black Widow. I hope that's not a spoiler, but. Oh no, that's, uh, uh, and I don't care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, I've. Because here's have I have told this story several times, and I, they will not do it uh, because it's the opportunity. The window is sort of closed for it. But Andy had the greatest idea for a one shot. When they stopped making those one shots, it oh, kind of hurt me a little bit. Yeah, because they were so good. Hmm. And um, Andy's idea for a one shot was in the. I think it was the. It was not alt. What was the one where they're all at the party, but. Uh, Pepper Potts and uh, Jane Foster were not at the party. Was that that Ultron? That was Age of Ultron. Okay, so neither one of those were in it. Mm. Andy wanted there to be a one shot where they were at (laughs) dinner. Yes. Just having a conversation about some sort of scientific uh, financial cooperation Mm. between their two companies. Uh, Funding funding some research for funding uh, some research. And then at the end of it, and they mention they do not mention Thor or Iron Man at all during yes. dinner, and they pull out, and the name of the restaurant is Bechtel's. There you go, perfect. Would have been beautiful, so great. And they uh, they they missed an opportunity, but you can't think of everything, and I understand that. But I, I, uh, I really enjoyed those. I like those. They had some a funny uh, thing happened on the way to Thor's hammer. It was a great one of the bit. great. Yeah, that was a great bit. Uh, the um, consultant was was good. You get to see. Uh, yeah. You get to see. Uh, you got Coulson to see the, and Coulson. Uh, what's his face, uh, whose name I can't remember, but the other guy, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Yep. You and know, they... yeah, it's it's so good. So now let's take some time here. Yes. Is there anything because <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier was so WandaVision was this amazing. So I have a couple of friends who have not been able to watch WandaVision or Falcon and Winter Soldier. They're they're just like, I don't know that I have enough backstory. I don't know. It's so weird. And they're weird. They like are. WandaVision is super weird. Um you have to kind of stick it out, I think, to the third episode. It's it's its own weird thing, but it's like the, I thought love is the first two episodes are so short. Because they are just sitcom episodes. Yeah, they're just twenty-two minutes, and and then you're done, and then they get a little bit longer, and then we get to meet Monica Rambeau, and uh, and I'm psyched that. Uh, yes, the Marvels. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Oh God. And but the and also the um <clears throat> right because Monica Rambeau will be in the Marvels, right? And yeah, and Kamala Khan. Okay. Yeah. Um, TV show, cartoon. What's happening? The Marvels oh, no. is going to be this Captain Marvel sequel. It's a Captain Marvel sequel. Yes. And but isn't going to there also Monica... a Kamala? Um... Yes, there's going to be a Ms. Marvel series. That's Ms. Marvel series. Plus series. Yeah. Right. She's, okay. She's joining the MCU in a in a, in a Disney Plus series. Okay, that's it. And um, yes. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so, but. I think that by the time they reintroduce, first of all, that guy from 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 Ant Man is back. Yes, uh, Agent Wu, and um, <laughs> and then so, with his with his close up magic. <laughs> oh, it made so much sense because of Ant Man <laughs> that he was good at up close magic, and then uh, also from Thor, the PA who yes. obviously went back Darcy. and became a, Darcy became a scientist. And um, I was like, it all kind of brought it together. So yes, you do have to have backstory. There's yeah. But do, you could do you just need the backstory plow... or can you not enjoy it on its own? Cause it's I think just if very you just a... plow through it and you will just like the characters as they are introduced, I think. Yeah. Uh, see, I can't, I, I have difficulty viewing it from that perspective because you know, this is so much part of my cultural DNA. Like right. I said, reading those 
damn oh hot move books when i was a kid you know and it's like you know oh yes of course captain america could lift so much more than a man of his average workout because of the super soldier serum right and, and then when uh, falcon i will not kiss a girl until i'm 30 but no <laughs> what's that i was making a joke about okay this sort of fair thing. enough i was like what no. just happened no, i was yeah. like did i miss something in the all hot so <laughs> yeah they made the the shield heavier for sam wilson because he yeah. is not a super soldier he is only uh, he's a really he's a buff guy he's but, just a know, buff guy he's not hold a helicopter strong no he is not yeah. hold a helicopter strong with one arm because yeah. he doesn't have a bionic arm yes. and uh which is why they have him sweating more and why they have him the the you know and he's got to keep the jet pack he's got to keep is, the falcon is, so is, is that also do you think a thing about uh about you know you got to work twice as hard to be considered half as good um if they're doing that, that's um, that's a terrible message. Okay. Because uh, it's not. Well, it's just it's just the way you know. It's just how. That's frequently African Americans say that's the way they're perceived. If you want to be considered half as good as a white man, you have to work twice as hard. Well, yeah, because no one is allowed to be mediocre and the hero of the story, except for white men. But um, but it's it's. The, the one part of it that I thought, because they dealt with race so well in it, and the, there was oh, yeah. just, you know, I am, my own racism is revealed every three or four months. I am currently reading a children's book because I didn't, I wanted it to make it through this, right? I was like, dumb it down. Give me the, give me the fifth grade version so that I, because I, I see what I see, but there is, it's called, uh, there's an adult version. I will eventually <laughs> read the adult version. Uh, but the, um, the kids version that I'm reading right now is, uh, it's called stamped for kids. And, uh, okay. it is by, uh, this gentleman, this, uh, Jason Reynolds and Ibron Kendi. So, it's called oh, yeah. Stamped for Kids, and I have uh, I have finished reading it. But here's the thing: it's short, it's dumbed down, like it's it's for children. It's for yeah. fifth graders. It's for ten year olds, and there is one called Stamped for Teenagers. I will read that one next, and it introduces. It just goes through the history of how race. It's called. It's about racism, anti racism, and how um, all the things have been used. Right, so. Um, and all the things by I'm I'm talking about are uh, legislation, yeah. words, actions, television, movies, and um, and 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 all these things. So in Falcon and Winter Soldier, we get to meet um, Isaiah. Isaiah, yeah, who Kyle Baker wrote and draw drew that. Oh, that and was so good. It was so good, and mm -hmm. it was called Red, White, and Truth. Red, White, it's and red, was it Red, White, and Black? Red, white, and black, truth, whatever. Yeah. And he had six of the seven flimsies, right? He, yeah. And he was like, I don't, I don't think they ever, he ever finished it. And I found the seventh one and I gave it to him for his birthday one year. Uh -huh. And, nice. uh, and then for a short amount of time, they printed it at collected. And I bought a couple of them when they had them out, oh, uh, but it's, it's out of print right now, that's but it's, it's it's terrible because it's but it is available on comiXology i believe that was the, going to be my next question because, yeah because yeah. it is so good it was and a it, very good story it just it talks about the super soldier serum and who they tested it on and why of course that they would have tested it on uh you know soldiers of color that and then not allowed the one that succeeded to wear the uniform yes so, yeah See, and yeah, I was right. gonna I was gonna bring up super soldiers as the next thing because that was all that was what really tied the incredible Hulk thing in. But yes, no, Isaiah was it was great to see him, great to get his backstory that they put him into the MCU and that his grandson is there and he was the Patriot. Be, yeah. Yep, young Avengers. It will happen. And yes. Yeah, so it it the way they dealt with, you know. It was, it was, because I know that the, the, the blowback on that was from white supremacist fans, right? Mm -hmm. Fans who were like, yeah, why do we got to talk about this stuff? Well, we talk about everything, you know? That's the greatest thing about comic books is yes. that they can talk about everything. 
including exactly. drug addiction, including homosexuality, including race, including gender uh, problems, you know, misgendering and, and um, sex misogyny itself, you know, that, that Captain America arc, that Captain Marvel arc, where she gets uh, raped by the alien oh, to have yeah. the baby. And then she comes back and you're like, what just happened? And she's like, and nobody came and got me. Nobody I'm, came. It was, well, the thing is, you know, I, I was very young when I read the Avengers annual. That was the follow-up to that. I read that way before I read Avengers 200. And I'm wondering if I had read Avengers 200 first, you know, would I have been, Oh, what a weird, quirky space thing to happen to Captain Marvel. And now her boyfriend's dead instead of like, you know, you know, that Jim Shooter story, which was terrible because, you know, once again, unacknowledged rape. Let's let's right. not stand let's and not ignore that. And yeah. And all of it. A, a, a abduction, rape, forced impregnation, all of it. Bad mind control. All of these things. No, right. these are not. These are not the things you should write off as whimsical, romantic storylines. Right. Right, and then right. Chris Claremont Very, comes in. Yeah. Chris Claremont comes in and like basically has her tear the Avengers in half. She like leaves Captain America beaten worse than the Red Skull ever has on the floor. And it's like, why the hell did you guys let him do this? Yeah. And, you know, it's one of the great things about that. I've recently learned, you know, about Chris Claremont is that he has written so many great just nuggets that have been turned into movies, that have been yeah. turned into TV shows. The plots of almost all of the stories are Chris Claremont. And that man's he should have a giant is... bag of money that oh he does. He has a jet. Oh really? Yes. I was I got to meet him at a convention once and I did not know who it was. I was you know looking through a uh some videos trying to find something for my wife because her birthday is right after this local convention. Mm -hmm. And I found an issue, an episode of the Avengers where, uh, where Emma Peel is dressed up in the thing, which he, which was a very strong inspiration for the uh, for dark Phoenix. Have we gone over? I am terrified that we have. And I, really we have, have. Okay. that's all right. No. But, <laughs> um, but I, but I was going to give this an extra 10 minutes just because okay. I keep talking. It is. It is a it is a pleasure to speak with you about this subject, which we both care about so much. So I find this. So I find the Hellfire Club episode of the, of the Avengers, and I'm looking at it, and then there's Chris Claremont standing right next to me, and I see it's him, and I introduce myself, it's like, oh, I should really buy this for you because it inspired so much in that book. He's like, a, I've already got a copy. B, it bought me a jet, so I can get my own copy. And I'm like, oh, well, there you go. You know, way to go, Chris. Because oh, I'm assuming, had, yeah. I'm assuming he had a good contract when they were adapting the X Men movies. Well then, good. I'm glad yeah. he. I'm glad he uh, was successful from that because everybody. I mean, there's so many different. You know, I there's an episode about Batman and that I did uh, with mm. Scott Rogers, an episode of The Dork Forest, where the guy who created Batman just stole from all of his friends. Bob Kane. And that's it. And um and so I I couldn't remember his name, but the thing is, it's it's good to hear a good story about it. So. Let's spend the last couple of minutes talking about Loki. Let's talk about Loki. I'm enjoying it so far. We're three so episodes in. Over. Yes. Yes. I am, conf I am as, as has been stated, predisposed to like it. Um, don't know what the hell is going on. No. No. Where did, and where did variant Loki come from? And what is her plan? She wants to get to the timekeepers. So. Right. And is she Sylvie? Is she the his girl? Is 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 she his his little friend from before that he shared his his powers with? Um, which is in the comics. Okay, I was um, like, I must have missed that episode. <laughs> when he was a child, yeah, they, there 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 was this great uh, where he was growing up, and he he grew up not on Asgard, not with his mom. He grew up with okay. Sylvie, and Sylvie was, I think, from from Hades. Okay. And I can't remember all of the things about it. And uh, which means like, that like the I, Greek Hades or like, uh, like Asgardian Niflheim or hell. Uh, like the Greek Hades, I believe. Okay. And uh, Mephisto. And um, so <laughs> we could do an hour just on Mephisto. Oh my God. Right. Cause we don't know. Right. <laughs> I mean, when, it, when um, obviously all of this is leading into the Dr. Strange movie. Yes. And um, there's, and uh, the the judge in Loki, yes, 
uh, Ravana. Rensselaer. Yeah, Ben Rensselaer. Uh, no, R- R- Ravana. I thought her name was uh, something like that. She is the girlfriend of Kang. Okay. And uh, Kang the Conqueror is a time traveling uh, supervillain. Yes. So, um, amusingly it, enough, the father of the guy who abducted Captain Marvel. Right. And but the, I think that so there's it's leading into all of this stuff. But I want I think Tom Huddleston deserves his own show so much that I want it to be mm-hmm. like, I don't know what the hell they're doing on that planet in the, in the, in those, in that apocalypse right now. That, I, that was just a neat character minute. Just him and him and the variant hanging out, you know, going right. It was 45 own... minutes of, of, of building that relationship. You know what it reminded me of one mm-hmm. of those movies for the seventies where two people would be shackled together who literally hated each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you oh, know, okay. it's like they both they're running away from, from the... the cops. Yeah, they yeah. got off the chain gang. Okay. And, you know, it's like they're just trying to get out of town. And, you know, it's like I did love that last scene. That was the, when when the sh- when the arc gets destroyed and everyone's like, oh, oh, we're screwed. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they didn't stop <laughs> it. Yeah. And that's where they ended the show. Yeah, I don't know. Like, are we going to follow these two variants and they're just going to die at the end of this? Because there's only three more episodes. I heard that they are going to do a second series. I heard they're doing a, a sequel. Already to Loki. They're planning it. It is It is part of, I'm assuming, phase five. Season huh. two is in development. Is there a season two for Falcon and uh, Winter Soldier and Captain America? I hadn't heard that yet. But I, okay. do, I believe they're doing a Captain America 4 starring Sam Wilson. Awesome. Yes. And uh, I, a War Machine is getting his own series. Okay. He's going to be leading the uh, Armor Wars series. Okay. It's uh, I like War Machine. I, I wouldn't mind. Because the thing is, is I didn't mm-hmm. know anything about Bucky Barnes before Winter Soldier and, and Falcon and Winter Soldier. And now I like him. Yeah. Now, now, now I'm uh, the fact that they fleshed him out. I was like, okay, so I do like the casting on that. And um, because she is amazing. Yeah. That casting woman. She's you're just like, how the hell did you pick these people? Because they're amazing. Like even Monica Rambeau. You're just like, that's Monica Rambeau. All of a sudden. And yeah, I don't know. Did you think she did the casting for Deadpool? I can't remember. I can't. I don't. I can't imagine. Don't it's Fox. Who, I don't know who the casting director is for the MCU. So okay, it's I the need, same woman through the yeah. whole thing. Then she needs to be recognized. I need to know who this woman is so I can send her a Christmas card saying thank you very much for all the hard work you've done. Yeah, you've, you know, stuck the landing a hundred times, it every Even single time. Paul Rudd, the guy's fifty-five <laughs> years old. How is he Ant Man playing a thirty-five-year-old guy, but looks like a thirty-five-year-old guy? Well, that's you know Paul Rudd's uh, nighttime regime is, must be incredible. <laughs> that, that the fact that man is not a spokesman for Estee Lauder is a failure on so many levels. It's true. I'm assuming he plies it with a trowel every night. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Justin Moharib. 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 Yes. Okay. Yes. Say it fast. Say your name. Mohadeb. Mohadeb. Okay. Justin Mohadeb, my name is Jackie Cation, and we have been talking for over one hour. So <laughs> we could talk forever, and I may yes. do uh, an episode that I was going to mm. do, but then you said MCU. So there's just too many movies, too many TV shows, and too many comic books to not do a thousand episodes about if we if we just look when Stan Lee started, we're going, you know, the with, from the Fantastic Four to now, we're talking decades. You know, the, yeah. the MCU's been on for over ten years, dozens of movies, hundreds of hours of television. Yes, it's it's a lot to talk about if you like it. And yep, and I we have no shame. And we have, oh, that's what we're ending on. Uh, <laughs> it's at the bitter guy, and it's just a Mohadeb. And uh, thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you very much for having me. I, uh, I am honored to be a guest. And I will say the thing that I always say at the end, which is Rangers, you, you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay. Oh, my God. We, why don't we just call that as the end of the show?